Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott, DIY Dreaming, and on this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make some really cute, mostly no-sew tea towels using Jelly Roll strips. We are going to do a running stitch. I'll show you how to do that. Um, and we're going to use fabric glue, so these will be washable. And then we're going to decorate it with the cutest stencil ever. This was part of the August 2023 Craft Club project box. And if you sign up for Craft Club before the end of August, you would get it. That's the only way to get it. So um, as you are hopping on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle. And let's jump right in. I have done these several times. Um, and I have one here that I want to show you, not because it looks good, because uh, my husband is always cleaning the coffee maker with my cute tea towels. Anyways, and it's not dry. I washed it this morning to see if I could get some of the spots out of it. Um, so I made this two or three years ago. It's been used and washed and used and washed and used and washed a zillion times. And this little ruffle is glued on using fabric glue. Uh, this is the kind I like, Sherbonder. It's quick. It's a low temperature hot gluing stick. Um, but I'll show you everything. And my goal here was to make this as easy as possible. Okay, and I'm using one of these little white tea towels that you can find all over. I love these. I get these whenever I'm in Boise at Craft Warehouse. They have this little thing in the corner. They're nice. They're a rectangle. They're pretty straight. And yeah, so that's what we'll be building our ruffles on. Okay, so this is a jelly roll. For those of you who don't know what it is, it's um, something that quilters use to make quilting stuff. Uh, I'm not a quilter. I'm just a crafter. But I learned about this stuff a few years ago and oh my gosh, I love it. I don't remember where I specifically got this set of all these black ones. Somebody may have sent it to me, or it could have been at Jo Ann's. Um, but either way, uh, what you're going to need is three of these. Okay, so let's just grab three. And I'm going to go dark, light, dark. Okay. These are pretty darn long. You want them to be at least double the width of your tea towel so that when they ruffle up, they look nice. So um, you can see that this is more than double. Hopefully you can see that. Let me switch back a little bit. I've got too many things on my desk. Oh my word. There we go. Um, and I know someone's going to ask me, I think these are standard size, but let me tell you, just in case. And there's one thing about these that makes them different. Okay, these are two and a half inches wide. Let's just measure the double. And about 40 inches long. Okay, so... We are going to basically hem these, hem the edge, the ends, using an iron and then using um, some of this glue. Okay, so I'm not cutting this. Oh, and here's the thing. I didn't hem these because they are cut with pinking shears. They're probably not going to be heavy duty towels that you would use for two years. They're going to be more decorative, but you could wash this and I'm not going to hem it. And of course, everything I'm doing today, if you want to do it um, with a sewing machine, have at it. But a lot of people don't have sewing machines or don't know how to do that. So I'm going to hem this. I'm just going to spray some water on it real quick. Turn out of the way. And then at the ends, I'm just going to fold it over twice. On the other end. Of course. 
course, you can do you can hem this with a needle and thread if you want, but I'm going to show you the super easy way. We're going to make three rows of ruffles, and then we're going to use that adorable flower stencil. Oh, thank you. Somebody said I look great in the skirt. This is an oldie, oldie jean uh, skirt that I picked up probably at Loft many years ago. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue this. And I'm just working on parchment paper just because it's easier. All right, so I'm using my Sherbonder Cool Shot low temperature hot gluing device, and I am using the Sherbonder sticks that are for fabric. If you're going to wash, your project, then you need to use the correct glue, and that's fabric glue. And I'm just gonna, um, it does come in different colors. This, for some reason, is off-white. I don't know why, but anyways. So there we go, there's one side hand. And there's the other side hand. Ooh, I don't wanna mess up my needle and thread. Okay, so we're gonna be doing three rows. And we want, most of them we're just gonna glue on like this. I'm gonna do a running stitch of the bottom two and we'll glue them on. But for the, for the top row, I want it to look neat at the edge. So imagine this one was gonna be the top. I'm just gonna fold it over just a little bit. I'll measure in just a second. And I have the ones that we're going to use all ready to go. I just want to show you these steps. And I don't want to bore you with me watching, watching me do a running or gathering stitch for 20 minutes. I've already done that. I'm just using water with my iron and my iron set on about cotton. Okay. So this is good enough for now. When you see this one on the tea towel, this is what you will see at the top. It will look like it has a finished edge. Okay, let me turn off my iron and scooch it to the side, and then we will talk about heat setting. Hopefully I'll remember. If I don't, somebody remind me, please. Because uh, we're going to be using this uh, permanent ink from MagnoliaDIY.com. And it, um, it becomes permanent after you heat set it. So you can wash and dry and wash and dry. That's what I use to make all of my um, pillows and tea towels and tote bags and t-shirts is I use the Magnolia ink. Okay, so I'm going to do a running stitch. And even if you've never picked up a needle and thread, you can do this, I promise. I'm just going to get it started here. Okay, I've just gone back and forth at the top row. And I put this green mat down, hoping that that would make it a little bit easier for you guys to see. So then, I'm just going to go across my piece and go up, down, up, down, up, down. Oh, and I forgot, I want to show you something else. So, um, see, this is just gonna, this will make it so that when I cinch it up, I can pull a ruffle. Do you see that? Okay, 
One thing you do want to do before you get too far into that is you want to figure out what is the center of your piece of fabric. And I'm just going to use a pin to mark it. This makes it a heck of a lot easier when you are putting it on your tea towel. Okay, so I would keep going all the way across and then I'm going to lay it out on my tea towel, on the end that I'm going to put it on. And I'm going to cinch it up to whatever the correct length is. And then I'll um, tie a knot off. And here is going to be our bottom row. Little black and white polka dots. And you can see I have my pin in the center. So that is going to help me to glue this on so that it will be even. Okay, and I'm going to start, this is all ready to go. It's all cinched up. I'll fiddle with the pleats or the ruffles a little bit in a minute. I'm going to start by gluing the ends on either side of my tea towel. I cannot wait to see this finished. It's going to be so cute. All right, and then I'm going to scooch this over and put my pin in the center. Does that make sense so far? Wow, there's a lot of people on. Yay, I'm so glad to see you. Um, okay, so then we're going to fiddle with our ruffles a little bit. Scooch them out. And this first row, I'm gluing just right on the hem, on the bottom of the tea towel. Once I get it, glued down pretty good. I'll show you closer up. And we'll also come back and adjust our ruffles even more. Okay, let me do the other side and then I'll lift it up and show you from the underneath. This honestly is not hard at all. Um, we were watching the news this morning, and I was sitting in my comfy chair, talking to my husband, and doing that running stitch. Um, it takes no time at all. Use, a, uh, use the color of thread that the fabric is um, so that it disappears. And, yeah. So because I'm using this, I'm using fabric, hot glue from Sherbonder in case you popped on late. And this, this gluing device I wrote with a Sharpie fabric because I don't want to have to be switching back and forth. So this is my oldest gluing device and um, I'm using it for hot glue. I missed. Okay, I'm going to take my pin out and let's look underneath. Let me get another piece of glue. And then I'll hold this up and then we'll quickly jump and do the next row. And then what I really want you to see is the top row because that's the one that I gathered but I kind of hemmed it. It looks like this. So it's a little bit shorter, but you won't be able to tell when we glue it on. All right, so here is the first row. 
and this is what it looks like from the back. I just glued it right on this seam at the end of my tea towel, and I want to look and see, are there any places that I really missed? so cute when we put the um, the wildflowers on it. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait. I'm going to tack my little hems at the ends down a little better even. cute just like this hanging over your stove but when I have it finished I want the top row to look more finished so I'm going dark lighter dark and here's the next one that I made it's all ready to go and I've marked where my center is and I have glue strings <laughs> connecting me to my tea towel so Pinning out my finger ow, to the center, so I know where that is. And I'll scooch the ruffles around in just a minute. I want um, I want to put the edges down first. And then I can see, do I have it pretty much straight? I'm really not a measurement kind of person. I just eyeball things for the most part. Look how cute that's going to be. It is going to be absolutely adorable. Then I'm just going to lift it up and put some glue oops, 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 down and push my area where the, um, maybe it would be easier if I go from the top. Let's do that. Push the area where I did the cinch into it. That side looks good. These ruffles don't have to be perfect. Okay. This would make the cutest gift. And you could do it, you can buy jelly rolls in a ton of different colors. Um, I've seen them at fabric stores. I've even seen them at the dollar store at Dollar Tree Plus for $5. They can be kind of expensive. Um, I've seen them as high as like $30. Uh, but if you're going to pick some out to do this project, you want to pick out the ones that have been cut with a um, pinking shear because they are less likely to unravel. I'm just looking from underneath to see is there anywhere that I've completely missed. Now look at this. 
and I'll get all the black strings off of it before we move on to the next step. Look how cute that is. And it was no so. Isn't that adorable? Well, it was a little so. You have to do the gather stitch. Or some people call it a running stitch. Some people call it a cinching stitch. If you have a sewing machine, you can do it on a sewing machine too. Uh, and I have a sewing machine, but I know not everyone does. So I try, for the most part, to do my craft projects um, with glue. Because I want everyone to be able to do them. Okay, and this one, because it's hemmed, I'm going to put it closer down next to the next row so it looks like the rows are all roughly the same distance apart. I don't know what happened to my pen to mark the center, but oh well. Now let's figure out where do we want it to lay, basically. Super cute! Thank you, Debbie. She says, so cute and no so works for me. Yeah, it works for me too. I love to sew, actually. It's just the hassle of getting the sewing machine threaded and getting the bobbins all ready to go, you know, and getting it set up somewhere that's going to be comfortable. That's the hassle. Um, the actual sewing is fun. When I was a younger, poor, newly married wife and we had our first house, I sewed almost all of the curtains for the whole house. <laughs> and I was so proud of them. And I did it my usual way. I didn't use um, a pattern. I just kind of made it up as I was going along. I'm just going to get a little bit of this on here. Pull out these nasty glue strings. For some reason, they're worse when it's fabric glue. I think that's because it has to be stronger to withstand, you know, washing and being handled more. So I have done this almost the same idea with t-shirts on the sleeves and that was really cute too. not going to worry if it's not exactly straight. It's pretty darn straight. Let's look from under here. Where have I not glued yet? So I kind of feel the same way about tea towels as I do about t-shirts. If you're going to make it, then make it awesome. Just like I do the fun stuff with my t-shirt sleeves, it's a tea towel, a homemade tea towel is more special when it has a ruffle or something extra and fun. Okay. There might be a few more areas that I could touch up a little bit more, but I'm going to say good and show you what it looks like. There's it folded, and here's the full thing. If you like this idea, and you see how truly easy it is, um, feel free to sprinkle. I would love that. Okay, and you might have friends or family that are interested too. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this piece of parchment paper underneath it, because this weave is pretty. 
medium, I would say. And I don't want to have to clean up my my little uh, uh, silicone mat here after the fact. I'm just looking to see. Do I have any? Okay, so we're going to use this. This is the stencil, like I said, that came in the Magnolia uh, Craft Club box, which if you don't know what that is, it's a monthly subscription that you can get at magnoliadiy.com. You get everything for a whole entire project. And for August 2023, this was the project. I forgot to grab it. But it's just right here. It was this adorable. I need to get a pillow insert or just get some polyfill and fill it up. It was this adorable. This is a pillow. And you got the pillow, which is really nice. You got the pillow, you got the stencil, which is reusable many, many, many times. You can see mine's starting to look kind of yunky because I've done a lot of things with it. You get the medium, whether it's ink or chalk paste. Um, you get whatever doodads there are. You get a new squeegee, which is kind of fun. And they make a video tutorial and they give you an instruction sheet. And it's, in case you don't know, it's $22.95 a month. It's something completely different every month. And um, $22.95 plus whatever your local sales tax is, and then it's roughly about $5 for shipping. And it's a blast. You don't find out what the next month will be until the day before the next month. And it'll come, based on when you signed up for it originally, it'll come 30 days later, and then 30 days later. So you'll, that'll be your schedule. Anyways. Um, Sandra says she loves their monthly. If you are one of my craft club peeps and you like it, most people do, um, tell us in the comments that you do. And tell us how long you've been a craft club member. And um, I would love to have anyone else here who isn't a member yet to join my craft club. It's a three month commitment and then after that, if you don't want to continue on, you can quit, but most people just keep going and going and going and going. And the thing I love about it the most, I'll quit talking in just a second, is that with the one stencil, you can do so many different projects. Every month, they're awesome. And these are a few of the projects that I have made with this. I made this cute little brown paper book cover. That's white chalk paste. I made this cute little canvas with um, some encyclopedia pages. And then I stenciled it and then I colored in some pretty colors. Um, this is my favorite. Oh my gosh. I made this pillow wrap. And this was ink. So I did the stencil twice on here. And a pillow wrap is just something uh, that, that you can get at magnoliadiy.com that you can put around the belly of your pillows so you don't have to switch them out all year long. So I did black ink, which came in that kit. And then I added, these are pieces from Dollar Tree Flowers and some vintage buttons. And oh my word, it, it's sitting on my fireplace and it is absolutely the cutest thing. And then, I didn't get everything out, because I've already made seven projects, but the thing I love the most is my jean jacket. What do you think? Where am I? Isn't that cute? And so I did the back, and then I put a flower, a couple little flowers, on the cuff of the right sleeve. This was just a little loft jean jacket that I picked up when it was way on sale for around $20. I used black ink and this stencil that we're going to use. Then when it was dry, I heat set it. I've worn it a lot already. In fact, I was going to tell you, when I was um, out in Idaho seeing my mom and visiting my sister, my sister loved it so much that she said, would you do mine? <laughs> 
So she sent me home with her jean jacket and I will do hers. Because her jacket is so dark, I will probably do the flowers in white ink. So anyways, let me know if you just want the info to look at Craft Club. Okay, and I think what I've decided to do is I'm going to have the flowers go down into the, um, well, do I want that? No, I don't. I'm going to just do these three flowers here on the end. Because most of the time, these tea towels are folded and hanging over your stove. So I don't really think it needs to have all of those on there. And to remind myself to stop, I'm going to put a piece of masking tape on it. Because I can get talking and then forget. Can you? And this won't hurt my, it's not going to hurt my stencil at all. I do want a little teeny piece to put right there. Okay, so that's going to tell me where to stop. And for this project, we are using black ink. Ink is um, something you use for fabric, any kind of fabric. When it's fully dry, you can heat set it with a hot iron, no steam three or four minutes and then you can wash like I'll want to wash my jacket for sure um, I'll want to wash uh, the yellow t-shirt that I made Jan says she's been in craft club since June it's very inexpensive and you get it in the mail each month something new happy mail yeah I love it too okay so um, I've used the stencil a lot, you can see. They do tend to get a little bit stained on the front, especially when you're using something like black ink. And I think the last project I did with this was my jean jacket. Uh, but they still work just fine. So, let's figure out. ish these um they're mesh so they're super detailed they're not like the stencils of the 1980s that were those big hard plastic things that you would um, have to tape down these are great they're they're like a silk screen okay and I'm just gonna take some of my ink or my glasses I need to see what I'm doing I'm not using this other part that says grow happy thoughts on this project. Um, you can pick and choose what you want to use for what. So I just put a little bit, looks like that has a glue string in it. It did. That's yucky. Let me get this off my fingers before I start touching my tea towel. on here and um, I am just going to pull it down through the holes in the mesh. I'm going to look to make sure I have it in every little spot and then I'm, go then I'm going to stop. You don't want to go over and over and over. When you do that, that is when you can have a tendency to either go out of the lines or pull too much of your medium ink through the holes of your stencil. And that is when it can look a little blurry. So I'm just pulling some of this excess off. Okay, let me concentrate for a moment. big gloves off. Okay, I'm going to be super careful right here. In fact, I am going to use one of my paintbrush squeegees. These things are amazing. 
when you're in a tight area, it allows you to get right in there and not get it, not get your medium outside of it. And see if I got everything. All the edge of the flowers and everything. Okay, I think I did. Uh, sorry, I keep getting ink on my fingers. And I don't want to get a big blob on my towel. Uh, So if you have a husband like mine that likes to use the pretty towels in the house to clean things up, tell him not to. Okay, I see one little area that I didn't get very well, so let's just go back. This little flower right here, leaf. right when you're at the edge of it, you're trying so hard to be careful that you don't go outside that you can miss the ends of the little points of the leaves or whatnot. Oh my gosh, it looks so great. Okay, I'm gonna throw this in my little tub of water over here, which looks like this. It's a yucky tub of water. And I'll push it under and then when I'm finished in here I will go out to my kitchen and spray it with cool water. Gloria says she wants to stencil her, stencil her denim jacket but she's scared and nervous too. Okay well just when you do it my only advice is just to be cautious that you don't use too much ink and you can do a little bit and then kind of pull up the edge and peek, and um, so I think you should. I'll get good pictures of this, but look how sweet that is. I don't want to mess it up. I'm going to try not to fuss with it too much. Isn't that adorable? So that is what I wanted to show you, just how many fun things you can do. Um, you could do this on a colored tea towel, a tea towel that has um, like a gingham print. Uh, the place that I, I get this question all the time, that I love to get tea towels, is a crafting store called Crafters Warehouse. And they do have an online option now crafters warehouse they're mostly out west i believe and there's one in um gloria i'm talking about the tea towels right now she's asking um there's one in meridian idaho which is where my mom and my sister live so um they just have the best quality tea towels so you could hop over there they're around four dollars a piece but these are nice you guys um, they're not your typical flower sack tea towel that those are always kind of wonky nothing straight this is a true rectangle which is what I prefer and this is what it will look like now when it is dry fully I'll probably wait until either tonight or tomorrow morning then I will go over it with a hot iron and I will put a piece of parchment paper in between my iron and the design just to protect my iron. 
and I'll go over it for three or four minutes and then I'll flip it over and do the other side. And then it'll be fully washable and fully usable. And yes, this Sherbonder fabric hot glue, my, um, my little device here is a cool shot. It's a low temperature one because I've had way too many hot glue burns. Anyways, this is washable and I have purchased it at Hobby Lobby. It's a little bit more expensive than the, regu the regular glue sticks. This package of 18 was $3.99 when I bought it. But if you're gonna do fabric and use hot glue, and it's something that could be washed or need to be washed or be handled a lot, like a tote bag, maybe you wouldn't wash that, but it'd be handled a lot, then you need to use the right kind of glue. And so you want fabric glue sticks, not, not these puppies. The, the ones that are for fabric. How long were your stripes? They were, um, these things. This is basically, I think, how they come. Uh, they're 40 inches long and two and a half inches wide. And they'll come rolled up so you can kind of see what the different fabrics are. Usually there's like a color theme with them, but they'll be all rolled up. And um, if you can, if you want to do this project, look for the ones that have the pinking sheer edges, unless you want to hem. And I've bought um, jelly rolls, that's what they're called, jelly rolls. I have bought them at Joann's Hobby Lobby uh, Walmart. Amazingly, they have some. Um, I've also seen them at Dollar Tree Plus for $5, which is a really good deal, uh, but I haven't purchased any from there. So, let's see. Are there any other questions? Do you guys like this project? If you think that you might uh, do this, then I want to see pictures, please. And I don't know if you know that I have that group called Dreamy DIY. It's kind of a little takeoff of my DIY dreaming page. So it's Dreamy space DIY. It's a Facebook group. There's, I don't know, 20 or 30,000 people there that are super creative. It's a place where you can share your pictures of your craft projects and you can see other crafters' pictures of their projects. It's just a, a place to get a ton more ideas. Um, so you would put Dreamy DIY in the search bar on Facebook. And when you get there, um, my admin, she asked me to remind people again, uh, you have to answer the questions. If you don't, it's a flat decline. We can't admit you into the group, even if you really want to be there and you're a good person. So please answer the questions. Number one, do you promise that you'll be nice to the other crafters there? Of course you do. So the answer is yes. Number two, do you promise that you won't use Dreamy DIY as a place to sell whatever your craft projects or maybe items that you sell? Um, because this is a wing of my business, which is DIY Dreaming. And also, um, I don't want it to become a big selling place. So you just have to say yes, you promise you won't. And then the third thing is, do you promise that you won't um, share other crafters videos there? The reason for that, in case you're wondering, is because in the beginning, you know, people would, will share uh, videos that I love from like uh, Barb from Shabby Tree. Um, and then I get a hundred questions in that group about how to do it. And I didn't even do it in the first place. So they all have their own pages and groups to share. And I know a lot of you are uh, in different crafting Facebook groups. But so that, those are the three questions and you have to answer. If you don't answer, it'll be a decline, says my admin. She's tough. And it needs to be that way. Um, you can report anything irregular if you see it to us. And uh, anyways... That is what I wanted to show you how to do. You guys, these are 
really pretty darn easy to make. The only sewing was the running or gathering or cinching stitch. People call it different things. It's just up, down, up, down, up, down with thread. That's the only actual sewing. The rest is all achieved. Whoops! With fabric glue, fabric hot glue. And I use the low temperature one. Judy says she's running upstairs now to do this. She has some navy tea towels and she's going to use, use white ink. It should be gorgeous. I want to see a picture, Judy, when you're done. So I will get pictures of this and I'll put them here in these comments as well as just on DIY Dreaming. Let me know if you want my links. You can say supply list. You know, I hate it when I watch somebody cook something that looks wonderful and then they don't give you the recipe. This is kind of what I provide, and I'll also provide a replay of this video at the very end in case you missed the beginning. I just want to make it super easy for you. So I'll be letting you know where this kind of stuff comes, what this kind of fabric glue is called, where it's from, all that, that good stuff. Okay, so just say supplies or recipe or links or something like that. And I'm gonna go sit down. I'm gonna get a fresca, doesn't that sound good? And I'm gonna get busy um, creating my supply list and then answering your questions. Feel free to sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, let me know if you liked this. I think most people did. I mean, I think it's adorable. I can't wait to put it on my stove door. So, have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you guys um, tomorrow. All right.